What do you think when you look at this astro photo? Do you think it's A, a punchy picture of the Sigur galaxy? B, that it shows a lot of structure in the core and the jets? C, that it contains details that don't exist? Or D, all of the above? I'm definitely in the territory of uh, D. And to look more into it, let's have a quick comparison where I put it side by side with an image of the Sigur galaxy from the Hubble. And I think it becomes quite apparent that especially like in the top blue portion and bottom blue ish per, um, portion of the image, there are some lines and what appears to be details that are not details. And they almost look like walking noise was kind of like dealt with by adding, by pretending that it is details. Otherwise, this image is a beautiful image. Uh, it's an image that was taken by Oscar Viteri and the photography, and I got his permission to use it in a video. He took it with uh, a ZWASI 2600 MC Pro, uh, an Optolong Ultimate uh, filter. It took uh, 7.5 hours of integration time from a Bortle 6 zone under a full moon or near full moon. And what is very interesting is the tools that he used to process this image, which were Serial, Photoshop, Starnet++, and Topaz Labs. Hey guys, Cliff the Lazy Geek here. And did you get that this video was going to be about AI tools in astrophotography? If so, you guessed correctly. And uh, the first thing I was wanting to understand is what does an AI think about using AI tools for astrophotography? So I asked ChatGPT, <laughs> our favorite AI tool of the moment, about the use of AI tools in astrophotography. And this is what it said. AI tools can be useful in astrophotography for tasks such as image processing and enhancement, object recognition and classification, and automated image analysis. The use of AI can help astronomers analyze large amounts of data quickly and efficiently, leading to new discoveries and insights about our universe. Uh, however, like any technology, it is important to use AI tools responsibly and with appropriate caution to ensure accuracy and avoid biases in the results. So ChatGPT uh, summed it up very well. And it is true that by using tools uh, such as Topaz Denoise AI, we can, as we saw in this earlier image, introduce detail that uh, may not be true to life or may not uh, occur naturally in our targets. Let me give you an example on one of my recent images of the Rosette Nebula, where Topaz Denoise AI, the software that I have open right now, adds details that just don't exist. On the left, you have the original image. On the right, you have the Topaz Lab enhanced image. And we can see, for example, in those zones here uh, that, that really don't look like they have a lot of detail, suddenly we have like streaks of nebulosity that appear with uh, Topaz Labs. And I suspect a very similar process happened with the Cigar Galaxy image that we saw in the beginning of the video. We also have tons of little squiggles all over the place in here, where uh, like looking at this, I don't think like in the area where I have the hand above, um, there shouldn't be anything really, but there are squiggles in the resulting image. And this is like that all across the image. It makes for a beautiful result. But unfortunately, it's like, in the, in, to some extent, actually, uh, to a really large extent, there are fake portions of the image or fake details of the image. Now, not all um, AI software or AI processes applied to astrophotography are equal. Um, to pass the noise here, you can see I have like all of those weird details. But one way that you can try to avoid uh, introducing those details that don't exist is to use the recover original detail slider. And if you set it to a, a relatively high value, you can see that immediately some of the details that don't exist uh, are removed. They're, they're no longer in the final image. Suddenly the image is much, uh, more, much tr more true to reality than the original processing from Topaz Denoise was. Um, this is with the clear AI. But how much do I need to do so to make sure that I don't have fake details in my image? Uh, what are the limits? Like, 
what works is a really difficult question. And if I use like the standard standard AI with just like the default model preferences from Topaz Denoise, I also get a, a nice result, but I do feel like I have some kind of weird squiggles all around that might not really exist in real life. And I think a lot of people would just go for that setting, standard AI with whatever AI, uh, whatever Topaz Denoise suggests. So it is a problem. And so even within a single tool, we can have um, multiple parameters that will determine how much like fake details <laughs> the AI, AI invents. Of course, we with what we just saw, it's easy to just be dismissive of any images that used uh, Topaz Denoise. And I, I don't think it should be the case. Overall, for me, going forward, since we have tools like Blur Exterminator, I am not going to be using uh, Topaz Denoise because I know there is the risk of introducing details that doesn't exist or that don't exist. But, you know, to each astrophotographer, their means of, you know, processing the pictures. And yes, there will be times when the end result might be more art than science. But then as amateurs, uh, a lot of the time, we do generate art that is based in science, but art nonetheless. Now, before I go further in the discussion, I want to have a quick look where I will be. I just mentioned Blur Exterminator. I want to compare Blur Exterminator on my image of the Rosette Nebula compared to Topaz Denoise AI to see like if there is indeed a big difference between those two AI powered tools. And you can see the example here on the left is uh, my Blur Exterminator um, image on the left and the Topaz Denoise, the original Topaz Denoise uh, image of this video on the right. And on the left, you can see that uh, the if I go back and forth, this is much more of a sharpening tool. And it doesn't look like, you know, fake detail has been added. This is because the AI has been trained to apply a mathematical operation, a deterministic mathematical um, uh, algorithm effectively. It doesn't apply the same all across the image. It's, it's smart about it. It protects the stars. It does a lot of uh, smart things, but it is still at the end of the day, um, a, a deconvolution algorithm that is approximated by AI or by ma machine learning. And it works extremely well. And it also does its utmost best to not introduce uh, details that don't exist in the image. If we compare left and right image, the difference is stunning. Now, if I were to post one of those images on Facebook, which one would have more likes? Maybe the one on the right, because it appears to be clearer, sharper, and have more details. And that is like one of the main, you know, worries with uh, AI-based uh, tools. So yes, we do see that uh, even different AI tools can have different impacts on our image. Even two tools that in the end achieve the same result, although the main purpose of Topaz Denoise AI is to remove noise, uh, it also sharpens the image just like Blur Exterminator does. And there are settings in Topaz Denoise to try and preserve the original details rather than adding new details that don't exist. But you know, you're never sure how much of that slider you should be using and then when you do use it, uh, it tends to introduce more noise in the image uh, or basically reduce the image, the noise in the image less. So it's very difficult when you're using Topaz Denoise to do so judiciously. Whereas Blur Exterminator is an AI tool, but it is an AI tool made to imitate a mathematical operation. And that mathematical operation is deconvolution, but it's something to be remembered is that deconvolution in and of itself even used without any AI, can introduce artifacts that could be misinterpreted as details that don't exist in the actual target. And if you've ever done deconvolution manually, you've seen that if you overdo it, you might introduce kind of like worm-like uh, kind of like texture to the image, which again could be considered to be details that are not supposed to exist. And this is 
not an AI-based tools. So this is always a fine line that we are treading as astrophotographers between do we want to stay true to the target that we are imaging or do we want to really process it and extract details as much as we can? Because yes, uh, I've been told many times that even narrowband processing where we select you know, colors for each band pass or even more than that, uh, one-shot color narrowband processing when we try to imitate the Hubble palette, uh, we're cheating, you know, because we're like um, doing, for for instance, a synthetic S2 or Sulfur 2 image, or, you know, it's like uh, we're basically um, outputting data or putting details that to the front that if I were to be looking at the nebula uh, from a, a short distance or if I had like telescopes for eyes, I wouldn't be able to see those details because they'd be lost in the H alpha, that kind of stuff. So we are manipulating the images to kind of prioritize which details we want to bring forward. And while doing so, it might be scientifically accurate, but it is not like the what we would see of the nebula or what, what the na natural state of the nebula is. I don't know if I'm expressing myself well enough here, but like, for instance, the Rosette Nebula, the colors that you saw earlier, they're not real colors, they're false color, they're still scientifically accurate as far as I can tell, but you have purists that say like, okay, the Rosette Nebula is mostly H-alpha, so it should be red. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, it's it's also a very understandable point of view. It's not my point of view, but I completely understand that. But let me talk a bit about another AI uh, tool that has been super popular for the last few years and has not generated any controversy or very little, which is star removal tools like Starnet++ or Star Exterminator. Uh, here I use Star Exterminator from RC Astro to remove the stars. We also have the very popular and very well-known Starnet++. Both of those are AI-based tools. And it's very interesting to note that while they don't introduce probably details that don't exist, if I remove this star here, I actually don't know what's hidden behind it. Maybe I have like nebulosity details kind of like this here, but the algorithm will just like some kind of kind of say like, ah, it's probably something like this. Right, so we do have in the very popular algorithm and that, that people don't really complain about, we have to imagine, like the, the AI has to guess what is behind the stars that it is removing. Now, it's usually not an issue because a lot of uh, astrophotographers will just reintroduce the stars at a later stage in processing and they just want to have this step uh, without the stars be available so that they can process just the nebulosity of their image. But there's still the choice of just showing the image uh, starless. And, you know, how true it is, it is, is it to reality? We don't know. But yet, starless images are very well accepted. And if anything, people will just complain about the fact that uh, astrophotographs should have stars in the image rather than think about like, okay, but what is really hidden behind the star? If we look at this, like there are, there, there could be details, there's probably like structure behind this star here. And to some extent, almost like the AI has placed that structure back. So it's kind of inventing something there. I think it's very interesting to see uh, the, the, the process that comes with removing stars um, as well. So we have all of those super cool AI tools available, but how do we use them? And, and is there like a limit on how we should be using them. And with that, let me circle back to our original image taken by Oscar. I think it's an amazing image. It's beautiful. It's very well done. It's a lot of work and a lot of processing work and using like uh, tools that are not what I use. So not PixInsight. And so I, I don't know, I feel like um, it, it deserves respect. And at the same time, Oscar was very clear that he did use Topaz Labs as part of his processing. And that's very good for me to know um, and, you know, it's like in the end, I think it's up to each astrophotographer to 
decide the tools that they are going to use, how they're going to use them, and you know what are their criteria for their own images. And yes, if you know we know for sure that there are details in the image that don't exist, then I do think it should be disclosed to some extent, uh, at least mentioning the software that's been used, because I have seen magnificent images that I do believe are really not real. And it does blur the line between astrophotography as a, a science and astrophotography as art. And sometimes I'm like, I don't care. I just want to have fun taking pictures of stars and nebulae and processing them and just like for my own pleasure. What does it matter that someone else used different tools than I did? What does it matter that someone like basically used Topaz Denoise AI that might have added new details to the image? I don't know. Does it really matter? Does it matter because, I don't know, normal people, non-astrophotographers will look at that image and say, oh, this is awesome. And look at those small little details there. I don't know. This is something, this is a really tough, let's say, balancing act because even non-AI methods, as we discussed, can introduce details that don't exist. So what is the right way of pro proceeding there? Uh, it will be very interesting to hear your point of view. So please do let me know in the comments. And while you're on your way there, you may want to click that subscribe button, that like button. And if you feel really like supporting this, the channel, subscribe on my Patreon. <laughs> But really, like, it is really an open question. I'm sorry, I don't really have a conclusion here. And I don't really have a conclusion here. And since I don't have a conclusion, uh, well, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars. And I'll see you next time.